welcome to Durham Cathedral, the Shrine of St Cuthbert. It's my great pleasure as Dean of the Cathedral and Chair of the School's Governing Body to welcome you here to this virtual end of year service and prize giving. This is always such a great occasion in the life of the school as we celebrate the successes and achievements of the academic year. So we welcome parents and families, governors, supporters of the school, our staff, and of course, our wonderful children. This year has been a year like no other, with the coronavirus impacting on all of our lives. But the Chorister School has been remarkably resilient, and I want to pay tribute to everyone who's played their part in achieving what has been a truly remarkable outcome. When the school finished just before Easter, we faced huge uncertainties about what the coming months would hold. Throughout April and May, the school remained open to ensure the, that the educational provision continued for those for whom it was essential. The start of the summer term on the 1st of June was a joyful occasion as the children were able to see friends again, either in person or via Zoom. And we're delighted that now so many children are able to be back in school. The school has worked as a team in partnership and collaboration with staff, parents and pupils, all having to adapt and adjust to this new situation. But what an incredible outcome it's been. A full term, but a term like no other we've known. So on behalf of the governing body, I want to thank and congratulate the pupils of the Chorister School for persevering with their learning and for absorbing the new ways of working. To you as parents, thank you for your loyalty and your support. You've assisted your children's learning and we've appreciated the comments which have helped the school adapt. And to the staff, we owe you a debt of gratitude for going online, for Zooming, for teaming, and sharing your passion for learning. In particular, I want to thank Mr. Wicks and all the senior leadership team for steering the Chorister School safely through the last year, and in particular, through this extraordinary last term. Given the challenges the school has faced, it really has been a remarkable achievement. As we turn now to today's speech day and the end of the school year, I know that today is a bittersweet day. We celebrate the achievements of groups and individuals, and we bid a fond farewell to our leavers, from the staff and from your fellow pupils. But as I stand here in the cathedral, I'm conscious that countless generations have gone before us in this ancient and holy place. So I celebrate with each and every one of you, congratulating you on a year well done and asking God's blessing on you in the year ahead.
the end of this most extraordinary term and school year, I'm filled with pride in the achievements of our whole school community. No one could have predicted at the end of the Lent term back in March just what a journey we will be travelling on together to reach this day. I do not want to forget that two thirds of the school year was taught as normal, with a huge range of matches, tournaments, trips, and a packed term card of events. We welcomed Mr. Sanderson to cover for the maternity leave of Mrs. Jenkinson in year four, and now we thank him for all that he has given to us as he leaves us at the end of this term. In the Lent term, the Galilee Choir went on tour to Edinburgh, Lindisfarne and Corbridge, and the whole school went to Beamish during the Lumiere Festival last November. The Cathedral Choir gave two fantastic performances of Handel's Messiah and the Monteverdi Vespers, complete with chorister soloists, in addition to singing the normal round of services. The annual path races were, won, were run, and the Dean's public speaking competition was held with the standards of speeches as high as ever. It was a normal school year. But then came the pandemic, and with the onset of the lockdown, since then we have remained open to care for our key worker children throughout the whole period. The decision to change the term dates turned out to be prophetic as our start of term coincided with us being able to welcome back children in the preschool, reception, year one and year six on the 1st of June. Since then, we've taught a whole term encompassing the complete curriculum, including art, DT, music and sport in a most imaginative way using remote learning. Along the way, we've been able to bring back more children into school with year two and three joining us after half term and our other year groups enjoying game sessions at the field. Staff, children and parents have had to learn a new way of being a school, utilising virtual remote learning using Teams and Zoom. Everyone has had to adapt. Teachers have created new resources. Parents have battled with internet bandwidth and devices, juggling working at home with helping their children. But of course, the real stars are the children. Their resilience, cheerfulness and determination have been an inspiration to us all. They have mastered new IT skills, video conferencing, shared documents, art, DT and musical projects, and of course, those wonderful house challenges. Life in school has been about bubbles put in place to protect every member of our community. Hand washing has become second nature and we've been marvellously served by our fantastic catering and cleaning team who've kept us all safe with relentless sanitising of all areas and delivery of lunch to the classroom in many cases. I want to pay particular tribute to Michael Pearson and his team as they've been pivotal this term and they've done an amazing job. Our youngest children have enjoyed the opportunity to play on the college as we keep the bubble separated at break times. Many have commented on how lovely it is to see the children at play using our beautiful surroundings in their learning. We have always been very mindful of our year eight lockdown leavers. They have missed out on so many highlights and the opportunity to celebrate their time together at the Chorister School as a group in the post CE programme. Many of these children have been with us right from the nursery, as it was called then. We'll be hearing from Henry and Lucy, our head pupils, later in this service. Last night, we were able to welcome the Year 8 children back to school to camp overnight in the Monk's Garden and to be together within the stillness of our great cathedral for a service of Compline. I thank them all for their leadership and their contribution to our school, for their mentoring of our youngest pupils, and I congratulate them on all the success they have achieved in winning awards and scholarships to their next schools. We wish them well for the future. We will see their achievements reflected in our list of prize winners, but every child in our school is a prize winner today for their remarkable response to virtual learning. We've had to find new ways to collaborate in this virtual world, and the musical and sporting challenges have proved that distance is not a barrier to teamwork. With the power of the internet, the music in this service 
and in many other occasions, and all of the other elements have been painstakingly edited together to enable our children, staff and governors to sing and speak with one voice. Thank you to all those who made this happen, and especially Mr Lee for long hours spent at his computer. Finally, I look to next term. It will be a truly amazing moment to be able to welcome every child back into school in September. We will still have bubbles, but the guidance gives us much more flexibility for these to coalesce and float apart to enable a more normal school day. Our focus will be on helping every child and family to readapt to coming back to school, which of course includes helping our boarders to resettle into the boarding house. There will be times to reflect on what we've all experienced and put this into context as we move forwards together. It has been recognised nationally that it's vital for our children to be back in school. We have been more fortunate than most by being able to deliver such a full curriculum this term. But I do not underestimate the challenge for us all to feel comfortable to come to terms with this extraordinary time in our lives. This has been an unprecedented and unique summer term for us all. We are amongst the very few schools in the whole country who have worked into August. But that has meant that our children have reaped the benefits of a whole term of teaching and will have maintained the momentum in their learning. I want to give special thanks to my senior leadership team, the governors and the whole staff of the school, without whom the school could not have delivered such a rich and imaginative response to the challenges of the pandemic. Thank you to every one of you for your support and kindness for each other and for our school. It has been a privilege to see our whole community working together for our children. Ladies and gentlemen, teachers and friends, I am very honoured to be presenting this speech for you today as head girl at the Chorister School. Sadly, this is my last year at the Chorister School and unfortunately, due to the disruption caused by COVID-19, we have had to adapt the way we have our end of year celebrations. This will be my 10th and final end of term service and it is with honour I now speak to you as head boy. I would like to spend a few minutes reflecting on my time at the Chorister School and the opportunities I have been given and perhaps this will spark some of your own thoughts about your journey through school. 
When I entered nursery as a shy and awkward three-year-old, my friends took me under their wing and made my separation from my home environment easy and welcomed me warmly at Coristers. I remember that we would see who could count the highest or knew the biggest number, infinity always trumping everything else. I did not realise it then, but this was the start of my journey of learning what friendship is all about. On my first day at the chorister school, I wouldn't leave my mum's side. I was very shy, and all the way through assembly, I cried on Dr. Wilson's lap, making a bit of a fool of myself. I thought school was the worst thing ever. However, here I am eight years later, and I now know that being here has been the best experience. I loved the journey we have all been on together and enjoyed being a pupil at the chorister school. It wasn't just the children in my class that were my friends, but the older children who looked after me and held my hand as I walked over on the walking bus, and the older girls and boys that I looked up to who would take the time to stop and talk to me or play with me for a short while. I realise now this is the essence of what makes the school so successful and a happy learning environment. Along with all the regular lessons, we have made lots of special memories. We have been on school trips to Beamish, Lumiere and the Botanical Gardens, running around the footpaths thinking it was the best thing ever. We've even had our own little talent show, which I thought was very entertaining, but I would have loved to have thought what the teachers would have thought. I have boarded and had pizza nights, which were great fun. Before I knew it, I was in fifth form, with a great trip to Manchester and an awesome climb up the mountains in the Lake District. Progressing from nursery to purple and silver class, the friendships grew in both strength and size as more children joined the year group. I recall the kindness and the patience of the pre-prep teachers. In particular, I remember one rainy grey school day. For some reason, I arrived in silver class wearing sunglasses, a cap and sun cream in my hand, only to be greeted with Dr Wilson's unwavering good humour, who turned the situation into a fun moment for us all. These were also the years we became aware of the rewards for good behaviour and the importance of, observa of observing the golden rules, desperate not to lose even a minute of the, the much-loved golden time. My next memories are from my time in gold class. Here, we were the elder children of the younger years, taking on responsibilities such as a buddy system for taking pre-prep children under the yard and taking on bigger roles in the nativity plays. A very exciting step in our journey was taking part in The King and I with the sixth form when I was 10 years old. I thought I was on the West End stage and it was a happy feeling to see Mrs Day beaming with pride. Team sport had been great at school, everyone gets to join in. I have been vice captain of netball and captain of rounders which I thoroughly enjoyed. Playing guitar and being a member of the choir and singing in school productions and services at the cathedral has been very special and memorable. Throughout school, we have been part of a big family where everyone from reception to year 8 joined together to help and support each other, encouraging the little ones to join in and have fun. We played together on the yard and beat Mr Jenkinson at ping pong. It was both a sad but exciting time as we prepared to leave preschool and head to year 3. Big steps for little children, but yet again the transition was made easy as we were already familiar with the other children and teachers. Year Years three and four offered yet more opportunities to shine. The school's unique ability to value each child as an individual became even more apparent. Whether your thing is music, singing, sport or academia, there was something for each of us in the annual talent show, music recitals and the middle school play. These were all safe places to grow our confidence. In year five, all the children were given a part in the year eight production of The King and I, performed at the Gala Theatre. This was, a highlight, this was the highlight of the year. It was also the year we could audition for the Galilee Choir. I recall I sang Edelweiss and was proud to be invited to join the choir. Year six was the start of the public speaking competitions, preparing us for the future. Our background of participating in small spoken pieces in the cathedral, at parents' assemblies and end of term services served as well. This was our this was also the year we went to Loretto. For many of us, this was our first trip away from home. Year seven was a tough year, the first year of the common entrance exams. However, we were suitably rewarded with great trips away and ultimately knowing we had year eight to look forward to with the trip to Askrig and the year eight play field trips away and endless fun planned for the last time of school. 
This was this was the time we had all been waiting for all our house to lies. But as you know, this was that isn't what happened. Year eight year eight had been an exceedingly challenging year. I was lucky enough to attend school as a key worker child for some of the time with my good friend Sam. Remote learning has been very challenging from both a teaching and learning perspective. I've missed my friends socially and I have even lift, missed the mountains of homework. But most of all, I've missed my friends. I was looking forward to my final year and knew it was going to be incredible. In August last year, I received a very special letter through the post from school. I was asked to be head girl and I felt very honoured and proud. I look forward to all the special events and responsibilities that this year would bring, but sadly many of them have had to be cancelled. This year has been very difficult to everyone with the COVID-19 pandemic changing the way we all attended school. Who would have thought we would have had lessons on Zoom? The teachers have made every day lots of fun, telling jokes, giving us riddles to solve, as well as our regular lessons. While we haven't been in the same room, we have all been included and able to meet up and socialise with each other online, which has been different but quite special. We have both enjoyed our role as head boy and head girl, and honour, and an honour we will remember forever. Good luck to next years of head school, along with the rest of the pupils and teachers. It has been an honour and a privilege to speak to you on what is our final day as Corister School pupils. Thank you.
We come now to our final set of prizes, which are for outstanding achievement and contribution. The Mark Julian Smith Academic Scholarship is awarded to Chloe. The Marinan Prize for Endeavour is awarded to Ossa. The James Henderson Cup for all-round contribution by a junior pupil is awarded to Simon. The Roger Harl Cup for all-round contribution is awarded to Libby. The Majors Shield given to the head pupils is awarded to Lucy and Henry. The Bales Trophy for teamwork this year is awarded to the key worker children. Let us pray. Let us pray for our own needs and for the needs of others, following the pattern which Jesus gave when he taught us to pray to God our Father. Through our love of the natural world, through our care for your creation, through our respect for the gifts you have given us, Father, holy is your name. In our homes and at our school, when we learn and when we play, Father, your reign come. By seeking your guidance, by keeping your commandments, by living true to our consciences, Father, your will be done. For the millions who live in poverty and hunger, for our own needs and the requirements of our neighbours, by cooperation, sympathy and generosity, give us today our daily bread. When we stray from the right path, doing what we ought not to do, and neglecting what we ought to do, forgive us our sins. If any who hurt us by being unkind or unfair, help us forgive as we have been forgiven. When riches make us forget you, or hard times prop us into despair, when success makes us boastful, or failure makes us bitter, in the time of trial, lead us into light. In the assurance of faith, in the confidence of hope, in the will to serve, help us to love Christ as Lord, and our neighbour as ourselves. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. As we come now to the end of the Chorister school year, we ask God's blessing upon the whole school for pupils, parents and staff. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>